Hi, everyone. My name is Ernest Lee. Uh, I am a dermatologist and physician scientist at UC San Francisco Department of Dermatology. Um, I am a clinician and I see patients uh, in the clinic, but I'm also a scientist and uh, I am interested in conducting basic science research on, on the skin. Um, you know, my journey into science and medicine has sort of been a really long one. Um, you know, I really started out uh, getting really interested in medicine, math, uh, science, and engineering uh, when I was really little. Um, I was always interested in how the world works, and I always was curious, and I was always wanted to ask questions about, you know, how and why things happened. And so um, my dad is a neurobiologist, and, you know, he always brought me to my lab, uh, to the lab uh, when he was going to work, um, and I sort of grew up around sort of a scientific household. And in middle school and high school, I actually got involved in Science Olympiad for the first time. Um, I started in 2002 when I was a seventh grader. Uh, I think I was 11 at that time. And, um, you know, I did Science Olympiad competitions for six years, two years in middle school, four years in high school. I competed at Torrey Pines High School uh, in San sunny San Diego. Um, and I was involved in both the regional and the state competitions. So um, that was really a formative experience uh, in my life because that was the first time that I was introduced to many areas of science outside of uh, you know, what I was learning in uh, my typical biology classes and physics classes. Um, you know, at that time, I had a really strong interest in a variety of different areas uh, spanning both biology, uh, but as well as electrical engineering, um, robotics, um, and I really got to explore all of these areas by competing in Science Olympiad. Ernest, can you tell us about your research? So um, I'm currently in the dermatology residency program. So I'm kind of in between research positions. Um, in graduate school, uh, which was from 2014 to 2018, I received my PhD in bioengineering. Uh, and at that time, uh, I was studying uh, various different projects. Um, one of them focused on using machine learning and uh, computer uh, aided design to develop and engineer novel antimicrobials, uh, antibiotics uh, for drug resistant infections. Um, another project I was really involved in, which got me interested in dermatology was understanding how the immune system works in the skin and how uh, dysregulation of the immune system in the skin lead leads to inflammatory diseases such as um, lupus or psoriasis. Um, and I was studying these questions utilizing techniques borrowed from my background, which is actually in physics and computational biology. I was using techniques from structural biology, x-ray scattering, computer programming, bioinformatics to try to answer these questions. And so now um, I'm actually looking to join a postdoctoral group uh, and uh, my long-term goal uh, with my next research, research position is to add new skills to my uh, skill set. So um, I'm interested in working in three major areas in dermatology. Um, I want to engineer new therapies for autoimmune skin conditions uh, like lupus and psoriasis and scleroderma, uh, which there really aren't very many good treatments. And a lot of that has to do with the fact that we don't really understand how the immune system works in the skin. Um, one other major area I'm really interested in is uh, utilizing big data and machine learning to leverage what we know about uh, electronic medical records, uh, as well as images in dermatology and um, you know, identifying new uses for existing medications in dermatology uh, and improving our ability to predict how people will respond to different treatments. So those are sort of the two major areas that uh, I'm interested in, in working on in the future. And as I understand it, you also work with patients throughout the day as well, correct? That and is correct. Um, that's one of the most amazing things uh, about my job. Um, you know, being trained as both a scientist uh, and a doctor, I'm able to work with the patients whose diseases that I'm studying in the lab. So um, my interest uh, lies in inflammatory and autoimmune skin diseases. Um, and uh, I have the opportunity to work with these patients in the clinic uh, on a frequent basis. 
Um, so my typical week would kind of look like uh, this, the following. I would see patients for either a half day or one day, uh, let's say, you know, Monday morning or afternoon. And then the rest of the time, I would be in the laboratory uh, conducting research, writing grants, doing experiments, things like that. Um, and we call that sort of the 80, 20 or 90, 10 lifestyle of a physician scientist, um, which is one of the, the, the standard models. Um, and it's just really amazing to be able to go sort of back and forth uh, between the lab and the clinic and uh, ultimately, you know, gain insights into how the immune system works in the skin and how I can use that information to better help my patients. So I, I was going to ask you, how do you think being a researcher makes you a better doctor and, and vice versa? Yeah, um, that's such an interesting question. And one of the reasons why I became a physician scientist, um, you know, as a researcher, you're, you know, you're in the lab, you're thinking about fundamental questions, but oftentimes, you know, it's difficult to identify, uh, you know, real applications in the real world. And being a clinician allows you to really see where the unsolved mysteries are uh, in medicine, uh, where the unanswered questions are. And oftentimes when you work with patients, they often ask you these really insightful questions about their diseases that you really don't know the answer to. And, you know, as a physician scientist, you are so uniquely positioned to answer those questions uh, in the laboratory setting. There's been so many situations where I've seen a patient, I've talked to them um, and they either ask me a question or they say something about their symptoms that doesn't quite make, make sense. And then as I ask them more, you know, I start to form a research question in my mind. Um, you know, could we write a grant about this? Could we study this in the lab um, using a model system? Um, and I love how that interplay really um, drives both my passion for the science as well as my passion for working with patients. That's that's so neat. What what a great interplay of skills and then also experiences, right? Can you tell us why uh, why you were interested uh, in the first place to study skin and why it it seems to keep you excited about some of your research and your work? Yeah. So. Um, the skin is actually the largest organ in the body, and believe it or not, and it actually comprises the largest surface area um, for your body for interaction with the environment. Um, it's super important for regulating your temperature as well as your skin barrier and protecting you from, from the outside. Um, and so, you know, I feel like the skin is somewhat underappreciated because we typically think about your skin as just, you know, being this barrier that's kind of dumb and not doesn't really do anything. Um, actually, the, there's a significant number of immune cells uh, in the skin, and actually your skin comprises your largest immune system organ, and it's involved in both antibiotic defense against microbes, but it's also involved in uh, inflammation as well, and in various diseases such as uh, inflammatory skin disease. So I became really interested in it um, because I was interested in uh, the microbiome of the skin, as well as what mechanisms were underlying inflammatory skin diseases. As I understand it, one of your interests and um, hopes for future research is utilizing machine learning to help you better understand um, the, the skin and, and dermatology in general. Can you talk about the relationship between those two things? I think most people yeah. would not put them together? Yeah, that is such a fascinating question. I think it's going to be a really hot uh, and exciting area of research uh, in the next five to 10 years. Um, you know, we know so much and we hear so much uh, about machine learning and its importance in many other fields. Um, you know, we think about how uh, you know, Google uses machine learning to predict, you know, what you like uh, to search for. Um, you know, Amazon will predict, you know, what uh, items you want to purchase, but you know those very same technologies can also be applied to patient data. Right now, there's such a, a there's so many rich technologies that exist uh, um, to look at your genome, to look at what proteins uh, your body produces in various diseases. There's so many inf so much information about various medications that are out there, um, but you know not a lot of people have uh, been thinking about applying machine learning to make discoveries uh, in dermatology. So, um, you know, one vision for the future is, uh, could we develop tools and models 
to help us identify which people would respond to a particular treatment for a particular disease, for example, and allow us to personalize that based on their genetics, um, you know, again, the, what proteins they produce based on their demographic information. Um, that's like one of the really, really exciting things that we can do, making use of all that data that exists out there and um, turning it into something that would be incredibly useful and helpful for patients. Ernest, if you could, uh, if you could leave us off with some advice for Science Olympiad students all over the country, our middle school and high school students who are thinking about a future in science, um, what advice do you have for them? Yeah, I think the best advice that I got when I was younger, uh, you know, thinking about, you know, what I wanted to accomplish with my life, uh, whether it was in science, whether it was in medicine, whether it was engineering, I think um, I was always told to keep an open mind and keep all doors open and just talk to as many people as you can. Um, you know, it can seem kind of daunting or intimidating, you know, when you're in middle school or in high school, but, you know, once you're, you know, thinking about going to college, once you're thinking about you know, what to do after college, uh, you know, meeting people and talking about their experiences um, is really the most instrumental, I think, uh, in helping you see, you know, what do I really like to do? Um, and a lot of times, you know, reaching out to these people, they would be excited and really elated to tell them their, their story and how they got into what they're doing, much like I am today. Um, and you may be able to find a mentor uh, or, you know, a, at least a someone to guide you and point in the right direction. Um, and who knows, maybe they could end up being your PhD advisor, they could end up being a colleague in the future. Uh, you never really know uh, where it'll take you. So I would just say, you know, read broadly, you know, learn about any, every, anything and everything that interests you, but talk to a lot of people and just keep an open mind. And don't forget to, you know, live your life and enjoy being a kid and, um, you know, just approach life with a curiosity of, you know, why and how. I love that. Thank you so much. That's great advice for all of us. Um, thank you again. And um, we really appreciate your expertise and we appreciate the work that you're doing. I have a friend with lupus and I know that she appreciates um, the work that doctors do on her behalf and, and so many other people. So um, keep up the great work and uh, take care. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs>